gentlemen and welcome back to another what if video my name is Diapir and as always it is great to have you today's topic is what if an employee continues working after testing positive for COVID-19 now in today's topic I will be discussing a recent labor court matter when an, uh, an employer dismissed an employee for coming to work although he knew that he was infected with COVID-19. Employee was tested, tested positive, but irrespective of the test, he continued to work. Now, the case I will be referring to is the matter of Escort Limited versus Sirman Makotsi. Now, in this case, Mr. Makotsi, an employee, as well as an assistant butchery manager at a meat processing plant, reported for work after one of his colleagues with whom he was in close contact with contracted COVID-19. He also continued working after he started experiencing symptoms himself and he also went back to work after he tested positive for the virus. Now just to be clear, he immediately went back to work. He never isolated as prescribed. Now while he was at work, he also disregarded the employer's social distancing protocol and often did not wear a mask. Believe it or not, he was also seen on the day he received his test results hugging a fellow employee and this employee happened to have a heart operation five years earlier and she had recently experienced post-surgery complications. The employee, after the employer realized or became aware of his positive test, was sent home immediately to isolate. And upon returning 10 days later, he was charged with gross misconduct and gross negligence. The gross misconduct related to his failure to disclose to the employer that he has taken a COVID test. And the gross negligence related that after receiving his results, the employee failed to self-isolate, he continued working, and in doing so, he put or placed the lives of his colleagues at risk. Mr. Mokotsi was found guilty and he was dismissed. Unhappy with his dismissal, he referred a dispute to the CCMA, an unfair dismissal dispute, obviously. And uh, in the arbitration, uh, well, at least the arbitration award, the commissioner agreed that the employee is guilty of serious misconduct, but the commissioner found that the sanction of dismissal was too harsh and the reason for this is because the employer's disciplinary code suggested only a final warning for this type of dismissal or type of misconduct rather. The commissioner accordingly found the dismissal to be substantively unfair and Mr. Mokotti was reinstated without back pay but or and with a final written warning. The employer, not happy with the decision of the commissioner, um, decided to take the arbitration award on review in the Labour Court. Now, what did the Labour Court say? The Labour Court held, firstly, that the commissioner had decisively concluded in the arbitration award that the employee's conduct was extremely irresponsible in the context of the pandemic and that he was therefore grossly negligent. So, the court noted that the commissioner concluded decisively so that the employee's conduct was irresponsible or extremely irresponsible as was stated and that he was grossly negligent. The court then said this conclusion on its own, given the fact of this case, ought to have been considered to be the end of the matter and thereafter that the dismissal ought to have, to be, have been confirmed at this point in time. The court further held that it had clearly escaped the commissioner's reasoning that the disciplinary code, as we know, is not prescriptive and that it is merely a guideline insofar as issues of sanctions are concerned. In other words, the court said that this commissioner clearly uh, did not realize or uh, it escaped his mind that uh, the code that he referred to which prescribes uh, or recommends a final written warning that that code in itself in regards to sanctions are only or is only a guideline. The court held that ultimately irrespective of what the code 
and the procedure stipulate in determining the appropriateness of a sanction of dismissal, the commission in this case was obliged to make an assessment of the nature of the misconduct um, in question and to then determine if whether combined with the other facts and the evidence that is led in the case, whether this misconduct in question can be said to be of gross nature. Now, once this assessment is made and the invariable conclusion is that the misconduct is of gross nature as to it negatively impacting on the sustainable employment relationship, then the sanction of dismissal will be appropriate, irrespective of what the disciplinary code says. Because as a point of departure, we know it is merely a guide or a guideline. Um, the court further found that this employee, the employee's carefree attitude was incomprehensible. Uh, the consequences of his conduct were not only dire for his employer, but equally so for his colleagues, their families, and the community. So this is not limited to the workplace. It includes family members of colleagues, as well as the community, and it can even go further. The court was shocked that the employee, despite clearly foreseeing the monumental harm he had caused, rather than showing remorse in arbitration or in the labor court, he played the victim card. The court found that the employee was not only grossly negligent and reckless, but that he was also dishonest in failing to disclose his health status over a period of time and completely disregarding all the workplace health and safety protocols. Based on this, the court then concluded that the commissioner's decision in finding that the dismissal was unfair uh, is not a decision that the reasonable decision maker could arrive at and therefore overturned the decision that the, the dis dismissal was both procedurally and substantively fair. Now, on a side note, the court also made the following comment. It stated that this case in question clearly compels the need for serious introspection by all employers in regard to whether existing health and safety measures and protocols are being taken seriously by everyone affected. The court said that it's one thing to have all these measures and protocols in place and on paper, but they are however meaningless if no one, including employers, uh, takes them seriously. Now we have seen and heard that some employers are relaxing some of the COVID protocols, um, you know, social distancing or not is, is not complied with, no one is wearing masks, um, the screening is not conducted, uh, etc, etc, etc. But with a possible third way of approaching, it is, as we all know, it is a must that these protocols be strictly adhered to. Now that is all from me today. Should you have any questions in this regard, as always, please do not hesitate to contact us. Until next time, bye-bye.